here. It's finally here. I can't believe it. So after many months of waiting, I finally have my hands on it. The CR Scan Lizard. It took a while, but the main thing is, it's here. Today I'm going to talk to you about my experience with it, ranging from the unboxing to general setup and use, along with my future plans and story behind it. Hey everyone, I'm Tommy and you've probably read the title, and yes, the word budget does apply. You can pick up the scanner in its standard combo for only 649 US dollars, and if you backed the Kickstarter campaign at just the right time, you could get it for as low as 210 US dollars, which is quite frankly a ludicrously low amount and incredible value for the money. Still, at the original price of $650, the scanner provides some fantastic features, which we'll get into in just a minute. This video does have chapters, so if there is a segment you do not wish to watch, feel free to skip ahead. I don't mind at all. So the story is, a few months ago I met with Brent Carpenter from My50. Long story short, he does lots of cool motorcycle stuff, and somewhere along the line I must have mentioned my experiences with 3D printing. Around the same time, Michael from Teaching Tech produced an awesome video where he 3D scanned a car part that couldn't be easily accessed anymore as it was no longer in production. He then 3D printed out the part in perfect quality, showing a perfect resemblance to the original. Brent and his motorbikes have similar issues. Some of the bikes he and his community work on are sometimes up to 30 or 50 years old, making it quite difficult to get new parts and nearly impossible to get custom ones. Do you see where the scanner might come in handy? Well, that settled it. I decided to back the scanner on Kickstarter and help Brent recover some of those lost parts and even help modify and make a few custom ones. I was also thinking about scanning for other people as a little job. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately, a few hiccups occurred and several months came to pass. Quite a few stressful ones at first. But as more information was disclosed from Creality, everything brightened up. For those who don't know, another company decided to take legal action against Creality. In the end, Creality handled the situation professionally and resulted in a positive outcome. Although the scanner came packaged in a rather unattractive brown box, everything inside was much better. As shown in the intro, the scanner itself came seated in a very nice carry case with an adjustable handle and extremely nice zippers, which I really like. It also makes the whole thing super portable when paired with a laptop and power bank. All the internal components were originally wrapped very nicely and it was a genuinely enjoyable unboxing experience. Here are some of the components I've received laid out. We've got the scanner itself, the turntable base and platform, tripod, silicone sleeves, cables, power supply and most importantly, the beanie! Which is a stretch goal not too many people were keen about, but I think it's pretty funny and still nice that they included it. It's quite heavy as well for some reason. So in terms of physical hardware setup, it was really quite simple. Just plug all the cables into the ports that they fit into. For some reason, the scanner uses an interesting connector. Not sure why they couldn't use Type-C for example, but I'm sure they had their reasons. This DC barrel connector here that the scanner uses for power input actually can work with a power bank if you use the right connector. The scanner uses 36 volts of power at 12 volts. Make sure you're using a portable power source capable of that output. Once everything was set up, I opened the latest version of CR Studio found on Creality's website, which at the time of writing is 2.2. This version worked with macOS and has also more improvements than its other versions. A personal favorite of mine being automatic in-app updates, meaning you don't have to always search for the latest version. The UI also has been revamped and is quite pleasant to look at, although still not the easiest for beginners to navigate. A couple of bugs I did encounter was the software just not working reliably on Mac. It would crash randomly and make it quite difficult to attempt the first scan. Switching over to Windows though, things performed a lot better, although it was still a bit difficult to know what to do. The software did crash once or twice, but was definitely much more stable. After a few tries, the scanning process did seem decently simple. There were two modes you had to complete before you could move over to the actual scan, like a calibration run. What I would do was leave the first two modes empty, aside from registering the turntable, then, when it came to the actual scanning, just scan what's there. It did take a few tries to get the hang of it, especially in handheld mode, but with a little bit of practice, anyone could do it. To scan this two-sided part, I first scanned the top part and then clicked the append button to scan the other side. I didn't know this at first. When this was done, I used an auto-align tool to combine the scans. This does work sometimes, but it's not always going to. Maybe in future updates the feature can be improved, as it's a pretty good feature. I definitely recommend getting some practice at manual aligning, as it will save you some time and frustration. After combining the scans and checking if they looked alright with no uneven overlapping or such, I ran the scan through the one click processing tool, which does do a pretty good job at cleaning and fixing up the model. So it does what's advertised I guess, that's generally a good thing. Processing may also take some time depending on the complexity of your scan and how powerful your PC is. 
When finished, you'll most likely have a near complete model, maybe requiring a few manual adjustments to be made, or if you're lucky, a complete ready to export file. I won't be covering the printing aspect in this video, but instead I'll be making a dedicated video soon. Also depending on what the community requests, I might make other types of videos too. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and once again, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon.